Today, Liverpool Football Club is one of the most successful clubs in European history. But they had to build their success from the darkness. They went from being pretty unknown to a global institution, housing some of the Premier League greats like Stevie G, Luis Suarez, Fernando Torres, Michael Owen, Mo Salah and Xabi Alonso to name just a few. From being without trophies to being the most decorated team in England, from two great disasters to glorious days. This is the entire history of Liverpool Football Club. Believe it or not, before 1892, there was no club like Liverpool. Liverpool Football Club owes its existence to the eviction of Everton from Anfield after there was a dispute between Everton FC and the leasehold of Anfield. After the eviction, John Holding, the owner of the Anfield Stadium, was left with an empty stadium with no team to play on it. This led to Holding on the 3rd of June 1892 to forming his own team, known as Liverpool Football Club. This history between Liverpool and Everton has led to an unending rivalry, which exists till this day, not only between the fans, but also between the players and managers. Bill Shankly, arguably the most successful Liverpool manager ever, once said, if Everton were playing at the bottom of my garden, I'd shut the curtains. He also said, I always said we had the two best teams on Merseyside, Liverpool and Liverpool reserves. Since 1892, Liverpool's name has been synonymous with fame and glory. Today, Internationally, Liverpool are the most decorated English team, with six European Cups, the sixth coming under Jurgen Klopp in 2019. Liverpool is one of the most popular teams in the world, boasting more than 50 million online fans. According to Nielsen Sports Statistics in 2024, Liverpool are officially the most watched football club in European football. They had a global TV viewership of 415 million from August of 2023 to March 2024 across domestic and cup fixtures. With 46 major honours, 19 league titles, 10 league cups, 8 FA Cups, 6 Champions Leagues and 3 UEFA Cups, Liverpool are the most decorated team in England both internationally and domestically. Now, we doubt there's anyone that can object to the greatness of Liverpool. But have Liverpool always been this good? Or have they had their own bad days too? Well, like every other club, Liverpool's story is one of grass to grace. Liverpool became a member of the Football League in 1893, playing their home matches at Anfield, which remains their home ground to date. The Reds, as they are popularly called, got promoted to the first division after just one season in the second division. Their inaugural season in the first division did not go as expected as Liverpool finished in 16th. However, they did quickly rise to prominence, winning the league in the 1900-1901 season under the managerial tutelage of Tom Watson after a run of nine wins and three draws from their final 12 games. Watson would go on to win it again in the 1905-06 season. From then on, Liverpool continued growing, but the trophies weren't initially coming. The team was actually struggling. They were close to winning their first FA Cup title in 1914, but lost the final to Burnley. I know, unreal. Finally, though, Liverpool won the league again after brilliant displays in the 1921-22 season and topped it off with another league win in the 1922-23 season. After their back-to-back -back league triumphs, many thought Liverpool were ready to conquer the world. Little did they know that Liverpool were getting set to go 24 years without another major trophy. Not to mention that they got relegated to the second division in 1924. So yes, Liverpool then went 24 years without a trophy. After the 22-23 league win, the Reds didn't win any trophy until the 1946-47 season when they won their fifth league title under the managerial prowess of George Kay. Liverpool's 53-54 season is a season that they want to forget. It was, not to put too fine a point on it, catastrophic. This was the season that Liverpool were relegated to the second division. Liverpool spent many seasons in the second division this time around. They couldn't secure promotion back to the first division for another nine seasons under the management of Bill Shankly. That's almost a decade 
of second division football. Now, you aren't a Liverpool fan if you don't know Bill Shankly, the great mastermind. Shankly is without doubt the greatest manager in Liverpool's history. The Scot joined a broken red team that was languishing in the second division and made it into one of the best teams in the world. How did he do it? Well, the first thing Shankly did as manager was to release the Deadwood. It may be funny now, but to Shankly, all the first team players, all 24 of them were dead woods and all were released. Having done this, Shankly turned Liverpool's storage room into the famous boot room, a room to serve as the secret meeting place of Liverpool's coaching staff. It was in this room that Shankly and other boot room members like Joe Fagan, Ruby Bennett, Bob Paisley began reshaping the team. Shankly's approach was revolutionary. He focused on building a strong team spirit and implementing rigorous training methods. Shankly's unorthodox methods bore fruit almost immediately. He led Liverpool back to the first division in 1962 and two years later they won their sixth league trophy and their first trophy in 17 years. He didn't stop there though. In 1965, Shankly led Liverpool to their first FA Cup and their seventh league title in 1966. In the 72-73 season, the Reds won the league and UEFA Cup double. And Shankly also delivered Liverpool their second FA Cup in 1974. Although under Shankly, the Reds won three first division titles, two FA Cups and a UEFA Cup, Shankly's impact isn't limited to titles alone. The Scottish manager created that dog in Liverpool. One of his significant contributions was the introduction of the famous This is Anfield sign, designed to instill fear in opponents and remind players of their responsibility to the club. According to Shankly, the statement is there to remind our lads who they're playing for and to remind the opposition who they're playing against. Liverpool's red kit, which got them the nickname the Reds, is also attributed to Shankly. In 1964, Shankly decided to change the white socks and shorts with red ones as he felt an all-red kit would make his players look more scary to the opposition. Shankly brought in players such as Ian St John, Roger Hunt, Kevin Keegan, John Toshak and many others, many of whom went on to become Liverpool legends. Not only is Shankly the greatest Liverpool manager of all time, but he's also, arguably, in the conversation with managers in the next tier down, Pep and Sir Alex Ferguson as the most influential manager that English football has ever had. Shankly created a legacy that would change clubs for decades. In 1974, Shankly retired and was replaced by his assistant, Bob Paisley. Although Paisley actually won more trophies than Shankly, many agree that Shankly's era is better because he laid the foundations. Regardless, because of the great exploits of Paisley, Liverpool didn't end up missing Shankly too much. In his second season as manager, Paisley won the league and UEFA Cup double. The next season, he retained the league and won the European Cup for the first time. During Paisley's nine seasons as manager, Liverpool won 20 trophies, including three European Cups, a UEFA Cup, six league titles and three consecutive League Cups. The only domestic trophy he didn't win was the FA Cup. With 20 trophies compared to Shankly's six, do you think Paisley is a more successful Liverpool manager? And then what about Kenny Dalglish? Despite contributing to 356 goals as a player, he also managed the club through one of their best ever spells, including winning six league titles, three European Cups and an FA Cup during the period 1985 to 1991, and then for a brief spell for 16 months from January 2011 to June 2012. Daglish is another absolute legend in the folklore of Liverpool. Tell us in the comments section who you think is the best manager Liverpool have ever had. It may even be the guy we talk about later. And subscribe while you're there for more football content. Paisley left Liverpool in 1983, and was also replaced by his assistant, Joe Fagan, another member of Shankly's boot room. In Fagan's first season, Liverpool became the first English club to win three cups in a season. 
He won the League, League Cup and the European Cup. Liverpool reached the European Cup final again in 1975, but the final match at the Hazel Stadium against Juventus is now known as one of football's disastrous events, the Hazel Stadium disaster. Before the match could kick off, Liverpool fans breached a fence that separated the two groups of supporters and charged at the Juventus fans. The resulting weight and pressure of people caused a retaining wall to collapse killing 39 fans, mostly Italians. As a result, all English clubs were banned from European competitions for the next five years. In the 1989 FA Cup final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest, another tragedy struck the Reds. 94 fans died in a crowd crush only six minutes after the game had started. To this day, the Hillsborough disaster remains the worst stadium disaster in English football. After suffering two disasters, the Reds were below par in the 1990s and early 2000s, even though they'd still managed to win some trophies. The famous Champions League final in Istanbul in 2005 was magical. After conceding in the first minute and then being 3-0 down against AC Milan at half-time, Liverpool launched an unreal comeback, led by none other than Steven Gerrard, Mr Liverpool, probably the greatest player to ever play for the Reds, ending up 3-all after extra time and culminating in Liverpool winning in penalties. This game was supposed to invigorate the club for the next few years. However, the team still went back to the status quo. During this period, it wasn't that Liverpool weren't playing well, but they weren't at the top of their game. For example, since the inauguration of the Premier League in 1992, Liverpool didn't win a Premier League title until the 2019-20 season, although they were close to winning in a number of occasions, most notably in 13-14, when Suarez was unplayable and scored 31 goals. But even this couldn't drag his team across the line after the infamous Gerrard slip. Such a shame. With the help of great players like Salah, Mane, Van Dijk, Firmino, Alexander-Arnold, Andy Robertson and many others, Jurgen Klopp did eventually manage to win Liverpool's first top-flight league title in 30 years and also won the Champions League and Club World Cup before leaving in 2024. Without a doubt, Klopp is one of the best managers in Liverpool's history. He took the team to back-to-back -to -back Champions League finals, winning one, he also won their first league in 30 years, amassing a club record of 99 points. Klopp won the league with seven games to spare. This is the earliest any team has ever won the Premier League. Arne Slot replaced Klopp in May 2024 and has promised to continue from where the great German manager left off. So surely more glorious days are to come for Liverpool. We'll see you in the next video.